things it's gonna be really interesting oh my god okay um good evening yeah so i'm deborah i grew up in the uk and i was the kid that at school always wanted to help people whether it be injured animals whether it be the um the people who were being bullied at school i was always the one put my hand up and wanted to help but of course i love people i love languages i loved helping people i went to the good old english careers advisor and they said oh no no you can't do that you need to go into science science is a good thing to do you know you go off and find yourself a decent husband and to do that you'll need to get a decent career in science so i went into science and i became a biochemist um <laughs> Didn't find a husband, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, I spent a little while working in science and realised it wasn't for me and started getting involved with businesses. And what I learned was I had a very natural talent for understanding what made businesses tick and what made businesses not tick. And I worked my way, as I said, through various different roles, working for people and also working for myself. I have had a couple of very successful businesses and a spectacular failure. Um, and I won't go into details there, but it, what it taught me was that there is always different ways of doing things. So while I was in my, I, once my business actually failed, I had to go back to corporate world for a while. And I spent three and a half years working in corporate world. And in that time, I hated it. Have you ever been in corporate where you've got all these different layers of hierarchy and all these things you have to go through? And I just thought, this isn't me. I really want to help people. So fortunately, I was old enough now to go sod the careers advisors. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I actually became a business mentor. And I started working with businesses throughout New Zealand and realised that was what made my heart sing. So I went into coaching. I started coaching people through the Ice House, the Lightning Lab, my own business, and um, found myself just working with people. And suddenly, I found things that made my heart sing. I ran a very successful coaching practice myself and employed other coaches. But I had this really big, hairy, audacious goal. Who in the room has got a big, hairy, audacious goal? Yep. <laughs> cool. So mine was to help 10,000 entrepreneurs to achieve their professional and personal goals whilst having some fun with it. Because I believe as business people, we're all too bloody serious half the time. And we've got to have a bit more fun in life. So I kind of went, OK, I've got this goal. I should be able to do that. But how am I going to do that? Because as a one-man band in a coaching practice, even with other coaches, how do I actually help them to achieve that? So I thought, I know. There is a real need for a community that can actually support each other. And I looked around, and there's lots of people doing different things and all doing a really great job. You know, you've got the likes of Grid Auckland, Generator, the Biz Dojos, the online communities, all trying to do this. But the thing is that they're, they're not necessarily encouraging each other to work together. That's what I thought anyway. And what I wanted to do was create a community where the community actually works together to help each other. So the problem was there. The opportunity was to actually create this space, this community, where people could actually work with each other to help each other achieve their goals. And so I had this idea, OK, well, rather than trying to do the online thing, which lots of people do do, I wanted to go, I looked at what was going on in the whole world, and I think as a world, we're looking to go back to having communities, physical communities. I'm from a very small village in the UK. Uh, we're about to have a royal wedding very soon. There was a royal wedding back when I was growing up, and we had street parties for Africa, celebrating the royal wedding. We would get together, we knew each other's neighbours, we knew everything about each other, we'd actually help each other. And yet, in the, um, in the business community, we weren't doing that. So the online stuff's fantastic, don't get me wrong, but where is that community who's actually there to support you. So I came up with this idea of running a thing called the Entrepreneur's Playground, and it's called The Common, The Entrepreneur's Playground, and the idea behind that is actually, my phone's ringing shit, <laughs> um, the idea behind that is actually to have people come and work with each other to help them achieve their goals. So it's a place that you can actually come and spend some time working on your business. Um, it's, it's a place that is designed to have a bit of fun, inspire you, champion you and support you to actually achieve your professional and personal goals. And the idea behind that is if you get a group of like-minded people together into a physical space and get them um, attending functions and things together, they can all work together. So we have a support system which is based around putting you in contact with the right people. Having a coach who actually works with you to make sure that you understand what your goals are, your professional and personal goals, and then helps you to, uh, to understand how you can actually achieve that. We have a physical space where you can actually hang out. You can hang out with other like-minded people, other specialists, people who can actually help you achieve that. There's also two gorgeous little puppies there, my Apollo and Artemis, who will actually give puppy cuddles. And then the right people behind you. So connecting you with the specialists, the people who actually have the knowledge that can help you to do that. So, sounds good so far, right? 
yeah, made my heart sing. Woohoo! I've got this thing that really makes my heart sing. I'm loving what I'm doing. But as with any business, there are a few speed bumps along the way. And one of the things I've learned is that you can have all the passion in the world and you can even have the most amazing business plan. I'm a business coach. It'd be really wrong for me to go into business without a business plan. But unfortunately, things don't always quite work out as you plan them to. And what I found was that while I had this passion and I really wanted to do it, it was a little bit too early for the New Zealand marketplace. So we hit a few speed bumps and suddenly it's like, oh my God, we haven't got the members. We haven't got the, um, the, the community building itself up. So I went to my advisory board. I'll talk about these later. Um, and my advisory board was made up of accountants and very staid um, business people because I wanted the opposite of me. I'm a fun-loving, go out there, give everything a go, take huge risks at times. I needed a steady influence, I thought. So they said to me, Deborah, you've got to go and get some desks. Put some desks into a space and have a co-working space because that's what people do around here. So I went, oh, okay. So I went out there and I actually went out and I bought close to 40 odd desks and I put them all in the space and I advertised people to come and sit in this desk space and suddenly we started filling them and the money started coming in. But suddenly I, I, my passion was to have people working on their business, not in their business. If you put desks into a space, what do you get? You get people working in their business, not on their business. And suddenly I was running this this a glorified corporate office in some respects, just made up of other people. But they weren't engaging, they weren't interacting, they weren't actually doing the things that I had hoped they would do within the environment. So I decided to go back to what my heart um, told me, and I went back to that whole thing about my core purpose. You know, I love this quote from Alice in Wonderland, where um, Alice comes to a fork in the road, and she basically asks the cat, you know, which, way should, which road do I take? And the cat said, it already depends where you want to go. Because if you don't know where you're going, any road can take you there. And so what I decided at that point was go back to what made my heart sing. Let's get really clear on the core values that I had and that I wanted for the business. And these are the core values up there. And I even had people tell me I can't say these things. You can't say no dickheads or muppets. Well, I absolutely can because I don't want dickheads or muppets in my place. You know, you can't say embrace your inner child. You're a professional. I've run companies of 200 people, I am professional, but it doesn't mean you can't embrace your inner child. So I went back to this and said, right, what is this all about? This is what we need people to be doing. And we got rid of all the desks. I literally gave them away. It cost me a fortune, but gave them away and went back to what I was trying to create. And I'm pleased to say, we now have an office where I was told, you can't have dogs, that's not professional. You bloody well can, and people love them. They absolutely enjoy coming into them. We have a space where you get to play. There is a dartboard, there's a scale trick set, there is a basketball game. You actually get to have some fun outside your business. And having fun builds creativity. You get to be inspired by people who have been there, done that, got the T-shirt, or are on the journey with you at this, time, time, uh, this place in time. Um, and I'd love to say, you know, it's a huge success, um, but it's not yet. And that's the other thing I've kind of learned is that I've had to swallow my own bitter pill. As a business coach, we always say it takes four times as long, will cost you twice as much as you expected for half the result. And I thought, no, that's not going to happen to me because I'm experienced. I know what I'm talking about. I've helped 200 businesses before. This will all be okay. But the reality is it happens to the best of us. It does take four times as long for twice the amount of money for half the result you're actually expecting. But the great thing is, for every failure that we have, we actually get to learn. And for every failure that I have, I also get to share that with people that I am working in the community with. So I am on the journey. I am wearing the T-shirt right now. So the things that I have learned, the key learnings, these are my, my, my sort of seven things for you. So do your homework and know your market. Really, really important when you start any business to understand who your target audience is, what they actually want, and make sure they see value in what you're doing. The second thing is to keep talking to your customers. We're in a really ever-changing world, and so um, literally week to week things can change. So keep talking to them, finding out what's going on. Be prepared to pivot and make changes. I'm about to make a massive pivot in my business right now. I had a session last night with some really dear friends who helped me understand where I'm at, and I will make a pivot. The thing I will do this time is I won't lose sight of the end goal and the core values, because this time round, I know I have to pivot to make money and to continue, but I don't actually have to go away from what my core stuff was. Never lose sight of your why and your values. Seriously, that was the biggest thing I did. You know, I thought that these experts around me knew, but in reality, um, you know deep in your heart what actually works and what doesn't, and you know what's right and what's not, so don't do that. Um, ignore the naysayers. 
but still listen carefully because sometimes those naysayers may not be right on the money, but they'll have some idea of what's going on. So ignore them, get on with it. Be yourself always. I'm sorry, but dogs in the workplace, that's me. That's what I do. Um, saying no dickheads, no muppets, I can happily say that because that's who I am. So always be yourself. And the last thing I really, really wanted to share, because it's what my whole community is based on, is actually ask for help. I was always the capable, strong businesswoman. Every, I actually got um, recognised as one of the top six businesswomen in New Zealand a little while ago, so I'm pretty capable apparently. Um, but because of that, I didn't want to ask for help. And yet the best thing I've ever done is actually go, you know what, I'm struggling a bit here, can you please help me? And that's where you actually find people who will rally around you and actually help with what you're doing. So I'm on my journey. I will get there. I know it. Um, the Common is a most amazing kind of space and community. And the best part is everybody in there shares the same values and are all there to help each other. So I wanted to finish on a call to action because as a coach, I'd be really wrong not to do that and say <laughs> we have got a networking events thing coming up on Thursday evening. And if you go to the address that's up there and use the code VIP, you'll get a special ticket for that, which is where we invite everybody who is passionate about making a difference, who wants to be part of a community that supports each other, to come along have a few drinks, get to know each other. And because I love to help myself, if anybody wants to talk to me, there are my details too, and I'd be happy to help. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. <laughs>